So in this video, let's create a game in a JavaScript framework called Phaser.js. Phaser, of course, is a rather comprehensive game building framework written in JavaScript and is built for the browser, but you can also run it in Electron if you know what you're doing. This is going to be a somewhat long video, so let's just dive right on in. The first thing we'll do to get started is open up our favorite file browser and create a new folder where our game will live. I'm going to create my folder in the root home directory, call it my underscore game. For this video, I'm going to use Atom because I don't think I've actually used Atom in any of my videos, and it's a really, really good and underrated cross-platform code editor. It doesn't have the same IDE functions as VS Code, but it's still an excellent, excellent code editor. And it comes pre-built with a lot of code snippets, which I'm going to use in this video. So in Atom, we'll open the folder we created, and we'll create a file called index.html. Open the new file, type in HTML, and press enter, and pow! Code snippets are awesome. We'll give our page a title, I'm just going to call it My Game. And under the title, we'll need to put a script tag. Adam has a code snippet for this too. And in the tag, we'll type in SRC equals a pair quotes. We'll get rid of the white space because we don't need it. And in the body, we'll do the same thing. We'll type in script, enter the snippet, and then SRC equals empty quotes. And this is what the required boilerplate code is going to look like. So if we open up Firefox, we can drag and drop our HTML file straight into the browser. After you do that, press F12 and open up the developer tools, go to the console, and you'll see two warnings. SRC attribute of script element is empty. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So for this video, I cloned my GitHub project where I've actually already written this game. It provides the assets we're going to use along with the phaser.min.js. Now obviously you don't have to do this, but it'll make my life easier for this video. I'm going to copy the assets folder and the phaser.min.js file into my my game folder. And you can see in the assets folder, we have four images that we're going to use in our game. Now in my example, I just downloaded the phaser.js file, but there's a few different ways you can do it. If you go to the phaser website, they talk about a number of ways you can actually install it, but they also recommend that you use a local web server. And we kind of already talked about this. We're just going to be using a flat HTML file in Firefox to play our game. For the script at the top, we'll type in phaser.min.js, which is the name of the file that we copied into our directory. Now for the script tag at the bottom, we'll have to create a new file. Let's call it game.js. This is obviously where we're going to keep our game logic. And in the source, we'll put game.js. And now when we look in Firefox, those warnings are gone. So now let's start writing our game. Open up the game.js file and write this line. Heads up if you're following along and writing code, I'm not going to read out each line because it's going to make this video take forever. It's already going to be a long one. Instead, I'm going to try to explain what each line is doing. This line, or lines I guess, is initializing the actual phaser game object. The first set of parameters is the size of the window along with some internal phaser stuff. And then you have the preload create and update functions. So this little object here is just registering our functions within the phaser object. We actually have to declare the functions themselves. For whatever reason, phaser requires function declarations opposed to function expressions. But if you're not used to JavaScript, it doesn't really matter. Each of the three functions can be declared like this the word function, and then preload, parentheses, and then our brackets. We'll do that for each of the functions. If all is good, when we refresh Firefox, we'll see a big black square. This means that phaser was successfully initialized. Now, if you see this warning in your console, it's nothing to worry about here. It's just a network error that's occurring because we're reading the file straight from the file system. So obviously our game's not going to do anything until we start writing some code in these functions. So let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do in the preload function is have the game load all of our assets, or at least all of the assets that we want to use when the game starts. Obviously, each game is going to be different, but because this game is so simple, we want to load each and every one of our assets. Now, because we're only loading it into the preload section, the assets aren't doing anything. You could say that the assets are sort of being cooked or warmed up in the back end. That's basically what the preload function is. Now, let's hop down into the create function, and we'll add a line to start the physics system and we'll add another line to add the sprite for the sky. Now when we go back to Firefox and refresh, we'll see the sprite for the sky. Now since our game is a platformer, we need to add our platforms. We're going to organize our platform into groups. We're going to call this group platforms, and we'll set the attribute enable body to true. We'll need an initial platform at the bottom. We'll call it ground, and that's obviously going to be the ground. Now there's a number of attributes to set for the platform that we create, mainly around the size and location of it, along with the name. We'll want to scale the platform separately after we create it, so that it will take up the entire bottom of the screen. 
And then we'll want to set the immovable flag to true because we don't want the platform just to like fall through the world. And then we're going to create a pair of ledges. We're literally going to call them ledge. We're going to create two of them and give them different properties because we want them to be in different areas. And now let's add the player. The player is obviously going to be a sprite. We'll use the woof sprite. And we want to make sure that our physics affect the player. Now when we refresh the page, we'll see a very simple scene with three platforms. One's a ground, two's a ledge, and our little player sprite. Of course, he's just kind of floating there in midair, so we'll apply gravity to him and give him a little bit of a bounce. And because we don't want him to fall through the world, we'll say collide world bounds equals true. And now when we refresh the page, the player will fall to the bottom of the screen. Now that we've gotten our player and our ledges out of the way, let's add some game objects to kind of give us a goal. At the top, we'll define a new variable. We'll call it diamonds. And back in the create function, we'll set that variable to equal a new group and then set diamonds enable body to true. Now one option is to define each diamond one by one and I guess copy and paste each line in for each diamond, or we can programmatically create them with a for loop. So in the loop, we create the diamond with the attributes, we set the gravity, and we set a somewhat random bounce factor. Now keep in mind that our diamonds aren't respecting the world bounds yet, so if you refresh the page, they'll just drop from the sky and fall through the world. We'll get to that in a second. Now the last two things we're going to do before we jump into the update function is we're going to add score text and we're going to add the cursors. The score text is just some text that appears when we start collecting diamonds and the cursors sort of initialize the controls. Now let's dive into the update function. This is really where the magic in the game happens. Let's start the function off by adding collisions. We'll add collisions for the player and the diamonds. Now when we refresh our game, the player and the diamonds will land on the platforms. Yay, it's starting to look like a game or something. So let's add a couple more things. We'll need to add some logic to tell the game what to do when the player overlaps the diamond object. So that's like when he collects the diamond. We'll also need to make sure that the player's default velocity is zero so that he doesn't just go skating or sliding all over the place. So in the overlap function, we're calling another function called collect diamond. We'll need to actually define that one. So our new collect diamond function will need to know what a player and a diamond is. The first thing it'll do is it will kill or remove the diamond from the world. We'll increment our score by 10, and we'll set the score text object to 10 above whatever it was before. Now it's time for the most tedious part of the entire game, the controls. Now just a little warning, I'm not a game developer, and I'm sure that there are better ways of handling controls, but for this game, we're going to handle it in a really nasty conditional statement. Basically, if the left key is down, do this. If the right key is down, do this. Now you'll notice that we have a function in there called player.animation.play. This is how Phaser handles the sprites. We want to play the left animation when the left key is pressed down, and the right animation when the right key is pressed down. So I forgot to define the player animations above in the create function. Just underneath the section where we set the player sprite and set as gravity, add two lines for player.animations.add left and right. If you look at the woof sprite, you can see that there's four images, two of him moving left and two of him moving right. That's where the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 come from. And now that we've got the animation and controls out of the way, we need to make it so our player can jump. Now jump is an interesting one because we obviously want him to jump when the up key is pressed down, but we only want him to jump if he's touching the ground, otherwise he'll just like fly away. And once we've set it so that he can only jump when he's touching the ground, we can refresh the game and collect all the diamonds. Now all that's really left is have the game do something when all the diamonds are gone. So we know we increment the score by 10 each time a diamond is collected. We also know that when all of the diamonds are collected, the score will be 120. Let's set it up so that when the score reaches 120, we get an alert saying you win or something like that. And we drop the score down to zero so that we don't get that alert over and over again. And there you go. Not much of a game, but hey, got the basics down. Now you can do a lot with this little game. You can put bad guys in there. You could make it so each time you jump on a platform, the screen moves up a little bit and the bottom is gone so that when you jump and miss, you die or something like that. There's a lot you could do here. Now, if this is your first time playing around with Phaser or JavaScript and you're following along and there's some kind of mistake and it won't work right, remember that you can go to my GitHub and get the entire project there. The code in the Phaser project in my GitHub is also a little bit different because I wrote it prior to this video and I put comments all over the place to help it kind of explain what's going on. So that's going to wrap this one up. I hope that you guys enjoyed it because it was actually a pretty tough one to make. 
If you did like this video, you should let me know on Twitter or leave a comment below. I appreciate all of your support and thanks for watching.